Good morning, everyone. It's Tess, and today is tip, I think it was 127. <laughs> I got to pay closer attention to that. Um, I just wanted to give a couple of tips today. We all know I'm part of the Doc V Challenge, and he has challenged us all to go live. Well, he challenged me earlier this year, and that's why I do still go live every day. But um, that's part of the challenge this month, too, is for everyone to go live every day. And today I thought I would talk about, like, uh, coordination and balance, because those are two things I, I've noticed even in myself that uh, can be impacted. And I thought, what are, like, some tricks of the trade to try to to keep that um, as strong as possible. Um, and I, I was thinking about it, because even, I know I've talked before that my mom and I walk, and um, for a while, um, she was walking me off the sidewalk, so we, we always joked about it. And part of what we did is we actually incorporated walking sticks. We have wooden walking sticks, and it actually gives us a chance to use our upper body, but it also keeps us on track. You know, we don't uh, walk each other off the sidewalk anymore. And it started me to thinking about, you know, like concentration and balance. Those are things that impact people as they get older. And I thought, well, what are some hints and tricks to kind of try to keep that strong as we get older? And I, again, a lot of stuff I get, I'm getting like daily articles from Harvard Medical. So a lot of the information I get does come from there. And they had articles about both. So when it was talking about balance, it kind of mentioned that Balance gradually changes due to aging, and sometimes as a side effect. Hi, Annie Mae. Good to see you. Um, hello, Miss Eileen. Um, so what they were saying is that balance does tend to get worse as we get older, and it can also get worse because of medications. So they said that a host of health problems can lead to unsteadiness on your feet. And we know that that happens to a lot of people. We see it. And sometimes it kind of makes me angry, like uh, now pre-COVID, because I'm not doing a lot of shopping still. But I can remember being uh, somebody who had had surgery once, like abdominal surgery. And I can remember being in the store. And I, I kind of got in touch with how it must be to be older and not comfortable on your feet and the way we're all impatient and like running around everybody and in a hurry and almost like pushing them down. Cause I can remember I was just a couple weeks out of, of major abdominal surgery. And I can remember standing in the aisleway of like a Myers and people were going around me so fast that it made me feel unstable. Like I was going to fall. And I thought we need to really be kind of conscious of that and be uh, careful around people because we don't know what they're dealing with and we don't want to be the person who unfortunately causes someone to fall because we're kind of being in a hurry and a little bit inconsiderate. Um, so I, I looked at this just to see what we can do, you know, because there are diseases that impact it. Um, stability problems are caused, like we said, by aging, by medications, by medical conditions, arthritis, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, but there are some exercises designed to help it. And like I said, when my mom and I are walking outdoors, we walk with sticks because that way if you hit uneven uh, grass or ground or even sometimes sidewalks have raised portions, it just gives a stick because sometimes you can catch yourself or just make sure that you're, you're, you're staying strong. But it also did kind of give some other areas where you can improve your, uh, your balance. And it said... For your lower body, you want to build things like walking by doing walking, biking, and climbing stairs because it strengthens the muscles in your lower body. Um, if that is, aren't comfortable activities for you, try a recumbent bike or a stair stepper. Um, if, and that will help you to start to build some balance because you're building your lower body muscles. It also talks about stretching. And I know I've been talking about how I've been stretching my upper body because I feel a tightness. But part of that probably is because I'm hunched over a computer all day long typing. So I, I need to try to do movements to open up my range of motion again. So we know that walking, biking, climbing stairs. We know that stretching, yoga, Tai Chi moves, all those type of things to use your muscles or keep that range of motion. Those are all good things to do to keep your balance as you get older or if you're dealing with any medical conditions that may cause you to have issues with balance. And I'll always be careful because none of us want to fall and break a hip or um, have a leg broken or an injury if we can avoid it. And it, it just made me remember when I had had that surgery, how quick everyone was moving around me. And so I try to be really careful, like if I'm somewhere and somebody seems to be moving slow, 
to be, even to go down the next style. If you're in that much of a hurry, go down the next style, but try to be considerate of the person who may be struggling with something that you just can't see on the outside. Um, and I guess I figured just to make sure I get close to my 10 minutes that we're all working for this month, I talk a little bit about concentration too, because I think, and the article talks about that too, that as we age, that's also an area that gets impacted. Um, you know, and it gave a few tips to improve concentration. And uh, that was something that I always work on, like even for the job, because um, I have to be able to stay on task to be able to problem solve. And um, I wanted to kind of think about what can I do to concentrate? Because even when we're walking, we want a certain amount of concentration so that we can focus on our balance. Not too much, because we don't want to have a narrow focus, but you know, little just little tips and tricks that we can help our, ourselves with. And it does, again, it says older people tend to have more difficulty filtering out lots of stimuli. And you, even, I even noticed that with students, because I know I, I talked about that I tutored reading and math for a number of years. And um, I used to try to teach techniques for the students because sometimes too much stimulus around them does cause them to get distracted. So we'd have to try to find things that would help narrow them in. Um, I had one student that was like fidgety with her hands, but she would get yelled at all the time because the teacher didn't understand. So we just kind of created this thing where she would just t put her hand under her desk and, and let her hands tap her legs because then the teacher didn't see it and yell at her. Um, so I think that kind of helped her to have a tool because unfortunately the teacher didn't understand and, and what happened is it got worse and worse and worse because she was so conscious of it trying to make it stop that it made, um, school not a, a happy place for her. So when she got some tools where she could address it, it just made life easier. So concentration, filtering out the, all the extra stimuli, like sometimes maybe it's if the TV is going, a radio is going, and you're hearing knocking, you might have to narrow that down so that you can get your focus. Because um, it says that the brain accumulates wear and tear over the years, and that there are stressors like inflammation. We talk about that in a, lot, a lot in Doc V. A lot of foods that we eat can cause inflammation. Um, a lot of the processed foods cause inflammation and that probably has a lot to do with our body not knowing how to process them. Um, injury to blood vessels, which can be caused from high blood pressure, can cause inflammation, which then causes concentration problems. Um, abnormal proteins can cause concentration problems. And I guess the brain shrinks over, as we age, our brain shrinks, so that can cause uh, concentration problems. So I guess I'm gonna think about what I've been hearing a lot lately. The brain is a muscle, so I'm gonna keep learning, reading, growing, doing whatever I can to keep that brain muscle active because um, I wanna keep my concentration as best as it can be for as long as possible. Um, it does talk about underlying conditions, can be depression, sleep disorders, sleep apnea. They can undermine your ability to concentrate. Um, of the effects of hearing or vision loss can also undermine your ability to concentrate because you're so focused on trying to hear or see that you can't focus on the other areas around you. Medicines can cause it. So medicines can affect all areas of our life, our balance, our ability to concentrate. And then it also talks about drinking. We know drinking can affect these areas. So it kind of gave an interesting exercise um, to do and maybe this is as well as like your reading and um, focusing and maybe concentration. Like I've read articles about doing puzzles, doing like uh, crossword puzzles, doing the, the puzzle puzzles that we always did with my grandma, um, doing uh, brain teasers, doing all different types of mental activities to use the muscle brain. But this also kind of gave something too. It said, when you're reading for 30 minutes, set a timer to go off every five minutes. When that timer goes off, ask yourself, has your mind wandered? And if your mind wandered, that's just a general reminder to refocus. And it says what happens when you do this on a regular basis is that you end up training your mind to focus on that reading. So it's just an ability to strengthen your uh, your. It's an ability to strengthen your chance to concentrate when you're um, reading, which will also strengthen the brain muscle to keep you moving forward. 
Um, it talks about mindfulness, uh, trying to be in the present moment, which is what that exercise is kind of doing, trying to rewire the brain for focus. Cognitive thinking, which is those playing of the games. Healthier lifestyle, because we know certain foods can cause us to be sluggish, and that could affect balance, high blood pressure, and it can also affect concentration. So one of the last things they mentioned is eight hours of sleep a day. So really in all areas of our life, if we get healthier with our foods, with our exercise, and with like mental activities, meaning like puzzles and uh, brain, brain teasers and crossword puzzles, regular puzzles, reading books, things that keep, I guess thinking about all parts of our body are some form of a muscle. So if we can do something to keep them active, keep them hydrated, keep them well fed, and give them an adequate amount of sleep, we'll be able to increase the length of time that we have before some of these start to have the impacts of age. So there are things that we can't control, but maybe this will even help with some of the diseases that some of us face. Um, so take any step that you can, better health, better sleep, better water, and any of those puzzles, reading, anything to keep all areas of your body active and crisp as you go into the next phases of life because there's a lot of amazing things in the world and a lot of amazing opportunities opening up and we wanna be able to enjoy every single one of them. Thank you guys for being here with me and I wish you a day of great balance, great concentration and many, many adventures. Thank you everyone for being here. I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. Thank you.